<sighs> Sorry. I just sat through two hours of Dan Hardy's response video to me, and I know that he did not directly say that this was a response video to me. However, it was. We all know it was. The fact that Dan Hardy chose, of all things, to wear a grey beanie in this response video, like he's cosplaying the great guru himself, is likely a very good indication that he knew he was slightly directing this at me the entire way through, but never really wanted to say it out loud. Either way... I'll say it out loud. This was a response to me, and I'm going to go through all of the moments that I feel like Dan Hardy missed the points, or was very disingenuous with the way he was describing things, because there were so many moments in watching this live, and the live chat will agree with me, because it was genuinely all, it was genuinely all the same opinion that I was having, which was like, what? How does that make any sense? There were so many moments of that, so I've written some of them down, and I'll go through them in today's video. We start straight away with him mentioning that Mark Goddard did, in fact, shake the hand of Colby Covington before the fight started. Now, I want to get this out of the way. I believe I've just beaten Dan Hardy, by the way. 10-8, I would say. Judging by his response, I'm pretty sure I beat him. Okay? 10-8, by the way. But let's get into it. We start the video with the fact that he says Mark Goddard did shake the hand of Colby Covington. He did this in his initial response video with Mark Goddard, and I knew about this, and I just think to myself, you know what? Fair play. On a different broadcast, it showed a little interaction between Colby Covington and Mark Goddard. This was a throwaway line for me, okay? And it took Dan Hardy, no joke, about an hour and 15 minutes to get to my main points, which was very excruciating, okay? But he proved, you know what? Mark Goddard did shake the hand of Colby Covington. All good. I wasn't really putting too much weight behind saying that he only shook the hand of Usman. It was just something that I noticed when I watched it back on BT Sport. Oh well, take that little victory, Dan Hardy. Okay? Mark Goddard wasn't obviously aggressively against Covington in the opening of the fight. Fair play. You have that one victory. We then go to the groin shot which Dan Hardy defended by basically going on a rant about cups for combat sports, groin guards, um, for about 20 minutes, it felt like, and then showing an, exa an example of one of his fights or a fight where someone hit him in the groin. And the example that he showed, and I don't know if anyone has watched this video along with me the way I have, but he showed an example of a knee landing to the groin on him and in my honest opinion, the knee that landed on him was way more obviously on the groin than the knee that he showed. This is such an obvious groin shot that he used to say why he felt like Usman felt the groin shot. This is su there, Here is the belt line. The knee lands. It starts landing all the way down here. Okay, and that's the example that he used to show me why you know, Usman did feel it on the groin, even though it looked like it didn't really land on the groin. He also mentioned, you know what, the little toe of Covington, upon initial impact with Usman's groin, maybe scuffed the top of the guard, which is a possible thing, but I do want to mention something that Hardy did not mention in this whole circumstance. Usman's shorts are so high up. And this is something I mentioned in my second channel video as well, by the way that Dan Hardy did not mention on this video, which I, I feel like he missed out a lot of information that he knew he should have said because he knew that that information would take away from his argument, okay? Usman's groin is where it is. However, Dan Hardy is using the belt line to dictate where the groin of Usman is. If you go on Google right now and go to Kamaru Usman on Google... You will see pictures of Usman in shorts, fight shorts, when he's in the cage and when he's not in the cage. When Usman is in the cage, his fight shorts are way higher up than when he's not in the cage. There's like a gap between his belly button and his fight shorts when he's not in the cage. But when he's in the cage, this is Usman's belly button right here. This little crevice that you can see here is Usman's belly button. Right below that is where the shorts begin. I don't know if you guys have belly buttons or if you're aliens, but if you have belly buttons, there's a lot of space between your belly button and when the start of your... 
well, what's not what's not not demonetizable? Your schlong begins, okay? For, I, I think off the top of my head, from the tip of my schlong base to my belly button is probably just under eight inches, okay? Now, I don't know. Well, that's just off memory that I have, okay? That's how I know. That gives us a lot of space to work with. Now, I'm a bit taller than Usman, so maybe his is a little bit shorter of a distance than that. But I truly believe that Usman's groin starts a lot lower down. And a lot of this was embarrassing because it was just us watching Dan Hardy sort of break down the anatomy of Kamari Usman. But if you look how low down the shorts are of Covington to where his hips are and where his ass begins, compared to Usman's all the way up here and his belly button at crevice being right there, Usman's groin is down here somewhere. So it hitting all of this area... Fair play, you know, it could have touched the top of the cup, but this is still Usman gaming the system, and that needed to be mentioned, okay? His shorts are so high up, okay? And, like, it, you've got a lot of space to work with. Eight inches for perspective is, I don't know how big your hands are, but it's two grips of a hand, and then two fingers on top of it, okay? So two grips of a hand, and then, like, two fingers on top of that space. So we've got quite a bit of space to work with here, Okay? I feel as though it still didn't touch the cup of Usman. But here's the main point about that whole situation. One, got, one Hardy did not mention this. The Usman's shorts are way higher up than Covington's. Okay, I'm way high up in general. I mean, they should be probably around where the UFC logo ends. At the bottom of the logo, in all honesty. But this was a benefit of the doubt. Foul that was called. That's something I really need to mention here. Because Dan Hardy later in this video claims that because he didn't see a foul very clearly that Colby Covington received from Kamaru Usman, because Goddard did not see a very clear foul that Usman committed on Covington, he didn't give him any benefit of the doubt and it needed to be clear in order for Goddard to step in. Okay. This is a benefit of, if it lands on the belt line and you're not entirely sure if it landed on the groin or not, the fact that Goddard immediately rushes in to aid Usman is not the same energy that he had with Covington when Covington felt like he got a thumb or a knuckle in the eye or a finger in the eye at the end of round three, which is another point that we moved, move on to in this video, which is how um, Dan Hardy kind of justifies um, Covington not being given a timeout in round four for the eye poke is because Covington thought that he got poked in the eye in round three. Goddard couldn't see it, so Goddard didn't give him a timeout, and it was just, you know, it wasn't really an eye poke. But this also could not have really been a groin shot. But Goddard still rushed immediately to Usman's aid to stop anything from happening. Okay? We go on to the whole eye poke segment of the fight after Dan Hardy shows an example of a knee and stuff like that that was clearly way lower than the shot that Covington landed on Usman and stuff like that. And we go towards the eye poke area. And also something I want to mention in this, Hardy keeps mentioning this punch being still a legitimate punch, by the way. He did that so many times in this video. This is still a legitimate punch, by the way, guys. You know, I know he didn't turn the punch over, but it's still a really legitimate punch that's still skillful. You know, I, I made a second channel video reacting to Dan Hardy losing to Carlos Condit by KO. And uh, the reason why he lost is because he wasn't turning over his punches. And Condit was in a close quarters encounter. You're supposed to turn over your punches when you're in close throwing hooks and trading hooks back and forth for extra power. Uh, so Dan Hardy, a lot in this video, referred to the fact that Covington wasn't st still wasn't fu fully turning over the punch, but it was still good. He mentioned that so much because he'd seen the second channel video that I made roasting him for bad technique against uh, da uh, Carlos Condit. But we move forward to another moment here. And this is the moment where Covington lands a head kick and then a punch lands from Covington on the face of Kamaru Usman. And Dan Hardy slows this down as a justification as to why when the eye poke landed in the right eye of Usman, uh, in the left eye of Usman, the fact that Usman was holding his right eye, okay? And it was this punch that was the reason why Dan Hardy broke it down, okay? And you can see him sort of going through it here. This punch doesn't land in the eye. You can zoom in on this video all you want. 
you can very clearly see this is the eye area of Usman. And below it is where the punch landed on the cheek of Kamaru Usman. And Dan Hardy uses this to explain why Usman's right eye was affected. Think about that. This is Usman's eye that you're seeing. And here is the knuckle of the blue glove of Colby Covington. And Dan Hardy uses this to justify why Usman's right eye was hurting. Now, I understand that maybe you could hurt your cheek and that could sort of cause some kind of displacement to affect your eye at some point up the face. I get that. However, I think that's a little bit disingenuous. I really do. I think that's a little bit sad. If it was a punch directly in the eye, first of all, Usman shouldn't be getting medical treatment to help clear that eye and get medical help with that eye in the corner. They should have only helped him with the area that was fouled, which was the left eye. Something that wasn't brought up by Dan Hardy. The doctors came in with Usman and they helped out Usman with his right eye. So he starts with his left eye and eventually he starts complaining about his right eye as well. The doctors came in and gave him like treatment and sort of care to his right eye that wasn't hurt by a foul, which I think is incorrect from doctors. Nothing to do with, uh, with Mark Goddard. But one thing that is to do with Mark Goddard is this. This is the shot in question. Oh, God, it's so hard to skip through all of this. That is deemed to be an eye poke from Colby Covington. This is the shot. And by the way, Mark Goddard is where the camera is in this position. Okay? If you are here and you see Covington's fist, as it looks right now, going towards the eye or the face of Usman, and it lands like that and... But, and bops back the face of Usman. Why is your initial suspicion that Usman has been poked in the eye? He covers up. He covers his face after that moment. But why is Goddard initially running in knowing that that's an eye poke? Because that's what we are claiming in this video from Dan Hardy. Goddard knew this one was an eye poke. It was an eye poke. However, again, it's a benefit of the doubt foul that Usman was given. I even admitted that this was an eye poke in my video as well. And I admitted that maybe it touched the top of the groin. But these are benefits of the doubt fouls that Goddard is giving to Usman as timeouts. He doesn't know this is a clear eye poke that Covington landed. Okay, because that looks like a closed fist going towards the eye. Very clearly, you can't see fingers, you can't see anything, and Usman starts covering up and moving backwards. And what does Goddard do? He immediately rushes in. Another thing I want to mention is Dan Hardy goes on this massive long tangent about how Covington lied about having a broken jaw, and his whole argument was, believe half of what you see, nothing of what you hear. Okay? And his justification of this was that the x-ray that came out wasn't of Colby Covington. Fair enough. It wasn't. Maybe it wasn't. I saw what Hardy proposed. It looked like it wasn't the x-ray. That's not to say that Covington was not feeling some... And, and he said this is Covington trying to spin the narrative. Why would he openly say that to his corner? To spin the narrative? If it's not a broken jaw, it could well be a dislocation of the jaw. It could be a sprain of the jaw, which is very, very painful as well and can give you locked jaw to where you can't really mobilize your lower jaw and stuff like that. And Dan Hardy's whole justification of this was listen to half of what you see or trust half of what you say and none of what you hear. And his argument was that because Colby Covington said to his corner, he's broken his jaw, that must be a lie. But because Colby Covington afterwards, in order to save face, said that he didn't have anything go wrong with his jaw, that must be the truth. He's used an argument of, listen to nothing of what you hear, but half of what you see. We hear Covington in the fight, in the middle of the heat of the moment, thinking that his jaw is broken. And we hear him afterwards trying to save face from the embarrassment of people mocking him for having his jaw busted because he was the trash talker, we hear him say that it wasn't even a broken jaw, nothing happened to his jaw. So Dan Hardy believes one half of it and doesn't believe the other half of it whilst using the same rule. That to me is bias. It has nothing to do with the video that I made. 
It has nothing to do with this fight in general. And he had a bunch of tangents where he went off about random stuff that were just impossible to sit through. But it just shows a, a little bit of a bias to reinforce his own belief. I don't believe Dan Hardy watched this fight with an open mind. I think he made his argument with Mark Goddard being innocent, and then he watched the fight, and he used that to back up his argument that Mark Goddard was innocent in the entire thing. And we move forward. He talks about, you know, all of this, the fracture and stuff, and he brings up all this stuff, and he starts talking about Pete Yan landing a knee on Aljo for like half an hour, and he starts bringing up this time that he was kneading the face, and he went down on the canvas, and he brings up more people milking it, and Luana Pinero milking a shot as well. And then finally, no joke, about half an hour later, thank God we get back to the point of the video. Um, and we get to here, and this is the thing that annoys me most. He justifies Goddard not stepping in, okay? He justifies Goddard not stepping in against Colby Covington when he gets eye poked by Usman. This is a very obvious eye poke from Usman, okay? An extremely obvious eye poke in both eyes of Covington. Goddard is right there. This is important. He can see this. If he blinked, fair enough. But he should be able to see this as a good referee. The shot where Covington did actually eye poke Usman earlier, Cod Goddard couldn't see it. He was behind the action. He could see the back of uh, Covington's fist. Goddard can see this entire situation unfold, watching it from right here. I have no doubt in my mind. Look at Goddard right here watching. Goddard sees that eye poke, man. And Dan Hardy's whole argument was, well, Goddard said he didn't see it. So he didn't see it. What about believing none of what you hear and half of what you see? Again, not applying that rule when it doesn't affect your argument, doesn't benefit your argument. So we go here. I poke lands. Goddard watches the entire thing happen as well. He's watching. He's watching fingers outstretched go into Covington's eye and not even just go into his eye, but push backwards in his face. And, and the fingers are still out afterwards when they come away from the face as well. So obvious that an eye poke has been committed and he's watching the entire thing. Okay? And Dan Hardy's argument is that the reason why Colby Covington didn't get a break or shouldn't have been given a break or why Goddard is not at fault for not giving him a break is because Covington addressed the referee to step in and stop the fight after an eye poke. I will tell you right now, no joke, every single UFC card, yes or no in the comments, every single UFC card, every single UFC card, someone gets touched in the eye and they go ref, and then the ref jumps in and says, yep, give him time. But in this fight, of all fights, and maybe you can find Dan Hardy another example of this happening 10 years ago, or something like that, or an example of when it happened in your fight, or something like that. But I'm not joking, every single UFC card, a fighter gets touched in the eye, they look at the ref, they go, a signal to their eye, and that's when the ref jumps in. That has been such a normal thing, and for just now, because Goddard, you're one of your dear friends, by the way, is coming under fire to start saying, it's not, you shouldn't do that if you're a fighter. Usman did the same thing. Is Usman trying to defend himself from his eye being hurt all the way back here? Or is Usman trying to get the referee to realize that he's been hit in the eye? Okay, let me find the moment right here. Here it is. Is Usman really doing his best to defend himself with a hurt eye or is Usman, after covering up initially, then touching his eye and looking over to Mark Goddard's position whilst touching his eye, trying to get the referee's attention? Look at him. He looks at the ref. He looks at the ref and he raises his other hand to signal to the referee that his eye has been hurt. And look, his eye is open. The eye that just got poked, which it did, but didn't really do too much damage, is open. And he's signaling to the ref to come and help him. That's exactly what Covington did. But because Usman did it in a more cowardly fashion, that means that it should be granted as more reasonable for the referee to jump in. 
I don't understand. And not to mention, Usman's on Covington was a clear eye poke to Goddard. And Coving and Covington's on Usman was could have been an eye poke. That's a difference in the way you're monitoring a fight, the way you're officiating a fight. And the whole argument that Dan Hardy was having in this was so annoying to me, man. So annoying. Covington deserves a timeout. And and he even said something here as well, when both of them are coming sort of face to face. You know, look, look, Covington's not even touching his eye. You don't have to have your eye feel hurt. If it's blurry and there's a bit of vision gone, you don't have to feel like, you don't have to Bilal Muhammad your way down to the canvas. If you've been poked in the eye and there's a bit of blurry vision, you have all the right to go, ref, give me some time. Blinking it out, ref, give me some time to like see clearly after this. But no, they bring them together. And this is where Dan Hardy says no damage to the eye. In my opinion, when there's a cut right here on Covington's face and a cut literally on the side of his eye here, and his whole eye is swollen up on his right side, the, the side that was clearly poked by Usman. You can't say there's no damage on the eye. And that's what Dan Hardy says here. And then we get to the back of the headshots. And this is where I'm going to bury him. Like, sorry, I'll go to this again. This is where Usman again signals to the referee, which is why Dan Hardy said that Covington shouldn't have been given a timeout. That's a little signal to the referee, man. Him putting his hand out there and looking over to the ref's position... That's a signal to the ref, and he even opens his eye and looks directly at the ref. He's not protecting himself from an eye being hurt against Covington, who's charging at him. He's looking directly at the ref, who charges to Usman's rescue and stops anything from happening on what could have been an eye poke, not what was a clear eye poke. And we move on to another moment here. The back of the head shot conundrum that Dan Hardy goes into. Where does it start? Dan Hardy, no joke, legit says... That this punch here wasn't really a back of the head shot. I'm not joking with you. Watch the video. We're at an hour, 23 minutes and 27 seconds in. Dan Hardy legit says in this video, this wasn't a back of the head shot. Is it this moment? Please be this moment. Is it this moment? No, it's this next one. Dan Hardy legit says... That that wasn't a back of the head shot. And you know why he justifies this? He says, look at the ripple on the arm of Covington. He dances around acknowledging that these are back of the head shots. I've got a screenshot. So Dan Hardy, if what I'm about to say is incorrect, be my guest and tell me I'm wrong and you didn't do this. In this video, you denied that those were back of the head shots and either proclaimed them as side of the head or potentially back of the head. You denied they were clear back of the head shots. Yes or no, Dan Hardy. Feel free to tell me I'm wrong and expose me about this in the comments where you can show the chat replay, by the way, of your very premiere video. You told me at the end of this video, actually, there were some back of the head shots. But in the very video itself, you said there weren't. Why are you putting up this image? Tell the truth. And you said in hindsight, in hindsight, you're studying for an exam here. In this video, you're like, mm, potentially, maybe one, you know, potentially, that one looked like it hit the side of the head. But in your own chat box, while I'm typing in it, arguing with you, you said, you know what, actually, there were probably about three back of the headshots. Now that I'm looking at it now. So you've admitted you're wrong and you've admitted that what you put out isn't just, it just isn't correct. Why would you delete the other video? And leave this up knowing within seconds of posting it in your own chat that you're not right about the back of the headshot. Which is one of the main arguments. He denies that as a back of the headshot. That's clearly to the back of the head. Covington's back of the head starts probably just underneath his forearm here. And Usman's caving in the lower back of his head. The neck is here. Okay, that's where Usman's thumb is. The knuckles are going straight to the back of the head of Covington. And Dan Hardy, why is he pointing to this area with his pen? Why is he pointing to this area with his pen? Because he said that because it brushed the arm, it wasn't really a back of the head shot. That's how he justified this not being a back of the head shot from, from Usman. I caught my fucking thing. Thank God I'm an absolute fucking whiz. Jesus Christ. 
My God, that would have been a disaster. Either way. That's a clear back of the headshot. Clear. And he's claiming this isn't. Clear, Dan Hardy. And you and he's saying you can see as the indent of the arm here that it wasn't really to the back of the head. It clearly was. It that is such a clear back of the head shot. And he starts talking about how some people don't really know what this is if you just started watching MMA. A lot of demeaning language in this. Man, I love Dan Hardy as an analyst, but you can't deny even Dan Hardy viewers, at the end of this video, he was so coping to try and not allow these to be back of the headshots. He had a narrative. Ah, uh, Dan Hardy audience member. Someone who I don't even recognize in the comments right now that I wouldn't recognize. Please, I beg of you. You know this. At the end of this video, when it came to the back of the headshots, Dan Hardy addressed them and analyzed them, begging that they weren't back of the headshots. He claims that that wasn't a back of the headshot. Boom. And that's not the only one. There's another one as well. Boom. Right to the back of the head. It's like undeniable. And he's like saying potentially. Who knows potentially. And who's right there in vision of all of it. Mark Goddard seeing the entire thing. Benefit of the doubt he gives Usman when he doesn't see it really clear. But when he can obviously see something happening clearly to Covington. He doesn't address it at all. There's no benefit of the doubt. It's just like, no, it didn't happen. And we'll see what happens. We'll see how the fight goes. But when there could have been something that happened to Usman, like the groin shot, which is debatable, and the eye poke, which at first glance is very debatable because it looked like a fist until you saw the replay, he jumped right in to help. He's smashing the back of Covington's head. There's no way around it. And for him to say potentially. And then to say afterwards, well, he didn't keep doing it. He started hitting the back of the side of his face as well here. Almost to suggest that, well, because he didn't illegally foul him four times in a row, that means that he didn't illegally foul him. It doesn't matter what it is. It's a back of the head shot. And it was so stupid to me the way he justified this. And even the way, like, he talks about this situation here. Right here... This is a back of the head shot. Covington barely blocked it. It's the back of Covington's head. Like, I don't understand why he can't get that. That's the back of Covington's head on display right there. That's one of his ears. If you can see the back of his ear, this is the back of Covington's head right here. And Usman bangs it right in the back of the head. And Covington tries to defend. And it lands through the guard of Covington. Right on the back. That's his ear. And it lands on the back of his head. And look at Dan Hardy's face. Please look at Dan Hardy's face. I'm going to show you a face of a man who knows he's wrong. But can't admit he's wrong. Look at the back of his face. I am not editing this. Look at the back of this man right here in the grey beanie. Look at his face as this back of the head shot lands. Please work. Come on. <laughs> he knows it hit the back of the head. Look at this man's face. Look at this guilty muck. Look at his guilty mug. Look, he tries to analyze this as potentially. But look as he watches this in real time and slows it down. Look at his face in reaction to this punch to the back of the head. And he starts admitting, you know what? I can actually see how there's an argument. How there's an argument. How there's an argument. And it's just straight to the back of the head. Look at his face. Ah, uh, fuck. He's kind of get. He's kind of got me here. That's what he's thinking in his head. Ah, uh, you know what? He's kind of got me here. Man, it annoyed me beyond belief. And then to talk about back of the head shots we are in such a long video here but i had to leave this once and for all that side of the head fair enough and you can talk about these punches and whatever these are not the ones i'm talking about but there's certain shots that we gloss over that would have landed to the back of the head if covington wasn't blocking them and he talks about covington needing to improve his position if someone's attacking the back of your head and your move is to protect the back of your head that's being assaulted right now 
that's improving your position of defense. Fair enough on the stoppage, but the back of the headshot should never have happened there. And Goddard should have seen them and took away Usman's position and said, you know what, no breaks, but let's get right back to work, okay? That's what should have happened. And he brought up the scoring of, of the fight. It could have been 3-1 Covington. It could have been 2-2, okay? That's not even a point. You shouldn't even be bringing up the scoring of the fight. That's a back of the head shot, man. That's clearly and obviously a back of the head shot that he landed. And he landed another back of the head shot as well. That's to the arm, whatever. And all this and all that. But that's a back of the head shot right there. And it's just there's so many of them. And my thing keeps falling here, which is really pissing me off. But he starts bringing up the fact that this is the real part of the back of the head when it isn't. And then it also gets addressed afterwards where he corrects his own argument. It's from the crown below an inch to either side. I'm sorry, guys, but when you look at this diagram of the rule set of the back of the head, of this red space, isn't that exactly where Usman punches Covington? Right in that spot. Isn't that spot, sorry, beyond just the cranial, uh, the crown of the head and below and an inch either side? Isn't this very spot where this punch lands almost identical to this spot just below? Is it not? That's the most dangerous spot. And it gets ignored. I'm not saying the fight would have been every, any different. I'm not saying that it was rigged and Goddard is in on some Illuminati conspiracy against Colby Covington by the UFC. That's all hoi polloi I was saying in the middle of my last breakdown. Like, uh, was he in on it? Who knows? I was just leaving the question out there. He officiated the fight so terribly, and it massively affected Covington negatively, and massively helped Usman positively. That's a fact. And you skirted around it. And then you started bringing up back of the head shots from Gabriel Gonzaga saying, look, this head kick kind of landed on the back of the head, and we don't say anything about that. That's a head kick. It's going to wrap around. Destination. Where do you intend it to land? Usman looked down, saw the back of Covington's head, and struck the back of his head at least three times clear, potentially four. And that's just one of my arguments. The eye poke, he should have been given a timeout, just like Usman was given a timeout, and your argument of, well, because Covington, you know, like it wasn't clear to the ref. Well, the groin shot shouldn't have been clear to the ref. Because it was debatable. And the eye poke from Covington and Usman shouldn't have been clear to the ref. Because that was a debatable. But he jumped right in to help Usman on those two. And he did nothing to help Covington. In his moments where he was clearly fouled. Right in front of Mark Goddard. And it's... It hurt me to watch him dance around this. I love Dan Hardy. He's such a good analyst. Inside the octagon was maybe the best thing ever about build-ups to fights. Maybe better than embedded itself. But he just skirted around this whole topic to protect Mark Goddard. And it was just obvious to me. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Toodle Pip. Sorry for the long video, but it needed to be done. Hopefully you don't strike this down hardy if you do that would be even more telling i used a bit of your content here but man to sum up all the things he never mentioned usman's belly button is on his belt line it's not his waistline that's on his belt line you can see very obviously between the two of them how one of their waistlines is way lower than one of their um belt lines right here see how covington sits on his waist and how Usman's sits way above his waist and almost comes up to his lats. His back muscle area. I mean, seriously, look at that position. Look at where Covington's ends above his legs and his thigh area. And look at where Usman's does. And type in a picture of Usman on Google. He'll be in shorts outside of the octagon and in shorts inside the octagon. His shorts when he's inside the octagon are way higher. But this is still debatable over whether or not it was a groin shot. Fair enough. The eye poke from Covington was not obvious. He also talked about this because he was salty. But the eye poke from Covington was not obvious. Okay? And Goddard gave no benefit of the doubt. 
or he gave Usman every benefit of the doubt and rushed in to save him. The groin shot wasn't obvious. Usman referenced to the referee right here to come in and save him. Okay? But when Covington referenced to the referee, he shouldn't have referenced to the referee, despite it happening every single time someone gets eye poked in the UFC. They touch their eye for a second, they look at the ref. Come on. Let me blink this one out. You don't have to be cowering in pain to be fouled. And if this is what you're arguing, Dan Hardy, something you continually mentioned in this video was football, soccer, to American viewers. How you hate it. And you mentioned this in the whole Aljo thing that you broke down. You absolutely hate it when people milk things. But you're using someone milking something to justify how it should help them in the eyes of the referee. It's annoying to watch this. I've, I've been such a massive fan of Dan Hardy. I spurred this video's creation. It was a nightmare to watch. I'm such a massive fan of him. But he danced around everything of truth in this video. Left out things he shouldn't have. And he skewered it to defend Mark Goddard. I'm done with the beef. I'm done with the beef. And I think I clearly win. I think I clearly win the beef. Let me know what you think. I think I'm so obviously right. And I think Dan Hardy. I'll leave it at this. Please let me find this shot. Please let me find this shot. The face of this man is all I need to know. Oh, please let me find this perfect shot. This is who won the Dan Hardy versus MMA Guru saga. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let Dan Hardy's face tell you who won. This is a reaction to him start, him trying to back up his own argument. Dan Hardy's face is about to tell you who won. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Toodle pip. I'll see you later. Goodbye.